Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. So canister filters, they're here to stay. I love them or hate them, they are here to stay. These canister filters that are out today have every bell and whistle that you can think of from thermal uh, to UV uh, sterilization, everything you can think of for great uh, filtration for your system. Now, they can also have problems if you don't maintain them correctly. And we're gonna talk about that specifically today because of an issue that I had personally the other day. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the filters themselves and uh, what I recommend for you for different size tanks and different scenarios. And we're also gonna talk about maintenance on these, uh, these filters because they do need to be maintained. You cannot just set them and forget them because that's just not the way it works. And we're gonna talk about uh, specifically how you clean these filters and how you maintain them to make sure you don't run into a problem that I had that was totally my fault. It wasn't anything to do with the failure of the equipment or anything like that. It was simply something that I overlooked. So hang in there with me. When we come back, we're gonna talk about all of this. We'll see you in a minute. So welcome back everyone. As I said, today we're gonna to be talking about canister filters. Now, you either love them or you hate them. And uh, uh, I know personally that I have a love-hate relationship with my canister filters as well. But overall, I like them for a couple of different reasons and we're gonna get into that a little bit today. We're also gonna talk about an incident that happened to me a few days ago that uh, really made it very challenging to like canister filters, but it was my fault. It was something that I had failed to do and uh, failed to recognize was a problem um, because of a busy lifestyle, basically. And uh, if you're going to have uh, multiple tanks, which I have, they're all over the place here, um, you do have to make some time to maintain them. If you're not going to make time to maintain them, they're going to go downhill quickly. You're gonna spiral out of control and feel like you have way too much uh, to do. Uh, water changes, um, keeping up on uh, dosing your plants with uh, uh, fertilizers, uh, looking at your fish every day to make sure that they're healthy. So that involves medications in some uh, respects and those sorts of things. But getting back to the canister filter, there's a couple of things that people don't understand about canister filters that I wanna talk about a little bit. A lot of people get a canister filter and they put it all together based on the instructions. They're all different. Google has canister filters. Awase, which is one of my favorites. Um, uh, Aquatop, uh, which is something I'm temporarily using right now. Uh, Marineland, I mean, you could go on and on and on. There's German made ones, there's English made ones, there's American made ones. They're, they're made by everybody and it's because of the um, amazing filtration that they offer for your tanks. But you have to maintain these, uh, just like you do any other kind of filtration system. There's a certain amount of maintenance that goes along with these. Now, uh, a lot of people, like I said, they plug them in and they think once they put them together and they've got them going, they can just set it and forget it. And, uh, uh, that is the furthest thing from the truth. There is some work that needs to be done. And uh, I wanna explain that today because it's uh, something that caught me off guard a few days ago. It was my fault. It was not the, the fault of the equipment itself. Uh, it was something that I failed to do and then the equipment failed me because I didn't do it. And the bottom line is, is that was maintenance. Now, um, I had been moving my discus fish around a little bit. I don't wanna give you a long story about why and make excuses and stuff like that, but I had been moving my discus fish around, getting my discus tank set up. Uh, discus have become a very popular fish with me, as you know, if you follow me. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that at, at the end of the video as well. But uh, I, was really just caught up in so many different things that one 
particular Owase 200 that I had plugged in on my uh, big 75 gallon over here came from the tank that those fish were originally in, which was a 55 gallon uh, Fiji cube uh, in another part of my home. And I brought it up and I plugged it in because I wanted it to cycle uh, immediately and I wanted to make sure that the fish were going to get off to a healthy start. Well it's been a while since I did that and uh, the other night I was uh, checking my fish like I always do to uh, see uh, before the end of the day that everything it looks fine. I check them in the morning and I check them in the evening. I just do uh, in the morning I basically will uh, make sure that everything looks right and uh, I will do a health check on my fish and just a basic routine that I go through. I have a little checklist and I recommend that you do the same thing. If you can put yourself together a little checklist, um, you, can, you can get yourself into a situation where you are not going to run into trouble. So the problem that I had is that I had overlooked the maintenance on this Owase 200. I came back in the evening and I looked at it just before going to bed and I noticed that the water was just a little off in color and I didn't really think about it much and so I went to bed and uh, you know something was bugging me. I, I'm laying in bed there and I can't sleep and I'm like something's really bugging me about that tank and I don't know what it is. Maybe I should go check the water parameters. I come into my gallery and the water in there looks like tea. Now, it's not because of tannins, it's not because of anything like that. Something has obviously happened that was fairly quickly, because it, was, it couldn't have been more than 25 or 30 minutes since I had looked at it last before I come in and there's this just absolute freaking mess in this tank. Particles of stuff floating all over the place. Uh, fish are you know going to the top and gasping for air well the bottom line is is the canister filter had gotten so overwhelmed with debris and, uh, and waste inside there that it got plugged up in one of the tubes and what happened is that plug eventually let loose when I um, uh, least expected it and blew that stuff all over the inside of my tank. So the bottom line is that I had a mess on my hands here. Now that brings me up to why maintenance is so important and this is one of the reasons why maintenance is so important. It's so easy to overlook canister filters and not really understand that the maintenance on a canister filter is just as important as the maintenance on any other kind of filtration system that you might have. If you have an all-in-one system, you have to check your pumps and clean out the tubes occasionally. Uh, you have to uh, take your sponges and rinse them out occasionally. You have to change the water sock in there occasionally. There's things to do. Now, I'm gonna tell you a couple of tips on maintaining a um, canister filter regardless of what brand you have. These are basic tips that you need to do. You need to make sure that you're maintaining your uh, canister filter about once every three months. Now, if you've got five, six, seven of these, put them on a schedule where you don't do them all in one day, or if you just wanna marathon it and you wanna, you wanna maintain them all at the same time and that's easier for you, go for it. But uh, personally, uh, that's a lot of work in one day and I really just don't wanna do that. Now, the second thing I wanna remind you is that when you are maintaining a canister filter, that you should take a bucket of water from the tank that that filter is attached to and use that to rinse out every one of your sponges. You may need a couple of buckets, maybe three buckets of water. You have a large tank, uh, 75 gallons, uh, you get a five gallon bucket. Uh, not only have you use the water to keep your canister filter in good shape, but you've also done a water change at the same time. So you kind of get a twofer on that, but uh, really never ever run your filter matter underneath the tap water in your sink. 
because you will destroy any kind of colonized uh, good bacteria that's in there and uh, you will ruin that and you will notice it because your fish will act funny, you will notice uh, lots of different things happening in your tank that uh, indicate that you killed off the bacteria and interrupted the cycle on your tank. That nitrogen cycle is so fragile sometimes and we don't remember that uh, little tips like this, washing your sponges out and, and so forth in the water that came in that tank is so important. When we come back, we're gonna talk about different kinds of filters and what they offer and uh, how just insanely uh, efficient these things have become and all the little bells and whistles that come with them. So hang in there with me and we'll be right back. So as I said, there are a lot of different canister filters out there. This one is an aqua top. And the reason why I chose this uh, temporarily uh, until uh, some parts come from my Awase, uh, and we'll get into that uh, in a few minutes here. But the reason why I like this is because it has a built-in UV um, sterilizer, which I think is so cool. It also has a built-in thermal uh, so that you can hide your, um, your, um, your heater uh, from your uh, tank if you don't want to see that. And also it has a single pump prime on it. Now that is this button right here. Basically when you set this all up, you're going to pull up on this guy here and you're going to let it go and it's basically going to suck water from your tank filling the canister up and when it gets to the point where it is um, officially uh, full, it will then drop itself down. Now, it will also continue to make a little bit of noise and I don't want you to feel like there's something wrong with your filter when it does that because that is normal. Any canister filter that you have when you start them out, they're going to be a little bit noisy for about the first 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes that they're put into use. And that is simply because all of the parts inside are getting absorbed with water and the tank is, or the canister, I should say, is filling. And that is the noise that you're hearing. And then all of a sudden, just like that, it's going to be gone, the sound in your if you have a good canister filter like this one here, which is very quiet, there are quieter ones in this one, but uh, this is sufficient. Uh, you are going to hear absolutely nothing and you're going to see in your hoses here that the water is flowing through here. Now, a lot of people take the hoses that come with the canister and they throw them away. They hate them because they don't like the looks of this uh, sort of yellowish color hosing. Uh, I don't like that either and I normally would replace that but because this is a temporary system for me right now just to uh, keep my tank in good shape I'm gonna leave these hoses on here. Now the reason why people don't like them is because it's hard to know whether your water is clean coming through here or not. It looks it looks nasty going through here before, I mean, from the moment that you set it up, it looks nasty. And also, I like to have a nice, clear, see-through tubing that uh, you can see how much buildup of waste and algae or anything else that's on there. And it gives you an indication as to when you need to clean these hoses. Now, this one has a quick release where you would pull up on that and these would come off. And it also has a... Um, a uh, situation where they have a valve in there. It's almost like a check valve on a uh, air stone where water will not come back through here once it's released from this area right here. And it's so, it's so simple to hook it back up. That's what I like about it. Now, Wasse has the same thing. Most of the canister filters that you see these days do have that particular situation going. Now, when we come back, we're gonna talk about a couple of other filters that I like and the reason why I like them. And uh, we'll do that when we come back here. So 
When you're buying a canister filter, think about the size of your tank and make sure that when you're reading the instructions on the or, or the advertising on the outside of the box, that it does tell you that this is going to be sufficient for your particular aquarium. Now, a couple of different examples that I have here. Uh, this is a Filter Smart 100. This is a great series by Awase. I love these uh, particular uh, filters. Uh, they're pretty compact and uh, very, very, very quiet, uh, which is really, really good when you have a lot of them going on in the same room at the same time. Now, this is going to uh, have a maximum um, 160 gallons per hour that it's going to filter. It's also going to be maxed out at 26 gallons. So if you have a 20 gallon tank, this would be what you would use for that 20 gallon tank. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can use this. You can use this as your primary filtration on your tank, or if you have all-in-ones, I have Waterbox Cube uh, 20s, a lot of those that I have around my gallery, and they have built-in all-in-one systems, and I like to use something like this, or this as a supplementary uh, to do that extra filtration just to make your water crystal clear and to give you a backup in case you have a failure on your, your system, then you have this to back up uh, that you can just take it right from the back of the uh, aquarium and hook it up uh, with the pipes that come with it and put it right into the aquarium and have your filtration uninterrupted until you can fix the problem that you may have in your all-in-one. So that is a really great uh, little hack, I would say, that uh, is going to make it easier for you to, uh, you know, not to have concerns that your filtration is going to go away. Now something like this here, which is a 60, uh, this basically their numbers, the 100, the 60, they all mean something. Now this one here will filter out about 80 gallons uh, per hour and is only good up to about 16 gallons. So this is something that you would use on a nano tank. Again, you can use it as your primary filtration or you can use it as a supplementary. These are great. I, I have supplementary canisters on every single one of my uh, tanks because of the two reasons that I explained. Number one, they offer up that secondary filtration to just make that water just that much more clean. And number two, if you have a failure of your system, then you have something that's already in place that you can plug in and uh, have it backing up uh, your system to the point where you can use it as your main filtration if you absolutely needed to. Now some of the great things about canister filters, as I said earlier in the aqua top here, is that they have incorporated so many new cool ideas in there. UV sterilization, uh, thermal, all of these things that you can hide away and get some really cool uh, stuff uh, that can be added to your um, canister filter where you don't have to look at any of this stuff but you can get the benefits of having the UV and also uh, the benefits of having your heater hidden away. There's other hacks, there's stuff uh, where you can absolutely pimp the living daylights out of these things. Uh, you don't have to use them exactly the way uh, the factory tells you to, you will void your warranty if you do, but you know, if you're like me and you want to hack your system and make it more efficient, uh, that's always an opportunity with a canister filter. There's endless amounts of filtering uh, media and matter that you can put into these things and make them work that much better. So, uh, to be honest with you, again, uh, this is a blessing in disguise for me with this uh, filter blowing out the other day. I am so lucky that I did not have a worse uh, scenario. It wasn't my primary filtration. It was a um, supplementary filtration that I was using on that tank. And uh, it did go out and it, it 
it's a problem, but I gotta tell you, Owase stepped right up because I have a relationship with those people. They are sending me new stuff, and I couldn't be more happy with those guys. Uh, I'm not saying anything against Aquatop. I'm not saying anything against Fluval or any of the other multitude of canister filters that are out there. I'm just saying my experience with Owase, who's been filtering water since the early 1900s for municipalities all over the country and probably around the world and they really do no filtration they made these things extremely quiet and i really like them so i can't wait to get my awase back in play here and uh, that's going to be easy because i'll just take the matter that's filtered in here i'll dump it into the awase when i get it back and uh, have an instant cycle on that canister. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. I hope you learned a little something from what I uh, have talked about here. I hope the video wasn't too long. and won't discourage people from watching it because it's such an important video uh, regarding the different kinds of filtration and in particular, as I said, canister filters in this particular uh, video. But uh, it's really important information. Leave your comments down below if you've had a weird experience with a canister filter or if you have uh, a canister filter that you know about that maybe not everybody knows about and you want to talk about it, leave that down in the comments down below. I will leave a couple of different uh, links to uh, Aquatop, Awase, and Fluval, all of which are canister filters that I use. I will leave links to those uh, filtration uh, systems down below in the description area. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for being patient with me in this video. I know it was a little bit long, but I wanted to be very efficient with it and give you a couple of things. Now, there's a couple of tips that I want to make sure you understand. Whenever you are starting out a canister filter and it has a built-in UV, do not turn on that UV until that tank has, or that canister has cycled. Also, if you're running medications, you might think about taking the carbon out because we're all told to take the carbon out if we're running medications, but also turn your UV off because if you are medicating a tank and you leave your UV on, you're just going to destroy those medications that are in there. So be extremely careful about that. If you are heating your tank with the thermal canisters that are available out there, be careful to pay attention to make sure that those heaters are working well. There are different heaters out there that have good indicators on there. Uh, what I would do is put a secondary uh, thermometer on your tank somewhere, whether it be digital. Uh, I don't like the strips, don't use those, they're crap. Uh, they don't work well. But if you do, uh, I wanted to make sure that you did know about those two things. And again, do not ever maintain your tank uh, canister filter and use uh, tap water. Use the water out of your tank to rinse your sponges out in a uh, a bucket and you will not destroy your beneficial bacteria in there and uh, you'll be happy that I told you that because trust me I've done it and uh, we do learn from our mistakes again thank you for joining me today we will be uh, talking about uh, some really cool things coming up here we're going to get back into uh, getting away from the discus fish a little bit and getting back into the other types of uh, tanks that I have in my gallery and do a, um, yeah, let's just say we're going to do a bit of an update on some of those tanks and how they're doing because I know a lot of you have been asking about that. Again, thank you for joining me. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, we're out of here.